If I had to marry a game, Nuclear Throne would probably be it, just after about 8 other titles. These next 20 seconds should give you a quick rundown of what the game is like. Nuclear Throne is a roguelike that ceased development over five years ago now. Its format is remarkably simple. You pick a guy, you fight through one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven levels, you kill a chair, and then you repeat. It starts pretty calmly, you know, at first you're just killing rats in the sewers, and then, uh, um... Okay, okay, first things first, the Vanin isn't vanilla. This specifically is from a mod called the Gun Bucket, and all of this video is modded. I cannot urge you enough to play this game this way, because these guns, they're worth playing the game at 30 FPS for. I mean it too, I probably have Stockholm Syndrome at this point because I don't even notice the 30 FPS anymore. Nuclear Throne was made in Game Maker and a bunch of the systems are tied to frame rate, and so you have two choices. You can play the secret beta build that has 60 FPS with no mods, or you can play with mods at 30 FPS. You can play with mods at 60, but it requires an extremely stable frame rate to work properly without going into slow motion, and I'm sorry to say that my 2070 Super just isn't cutting it these days to run games from over half a decade ago. This is the part where I say story over a muted background to act like this video has any semblance of structure. Reach and kill the nuclear throne. The police want to stop you. That's it. Game play. Nuclear Throne has variety where it needs to be. There are two ways you get better throughout a run. Your armaments and your mutations. Enemies drop rads on death, and when you pass the threshold shown up here, you can pick from one of four mutations, of just under 30 in total, after you clear the level and head through the portal. All of them change up the gameplay in a variety of helpful ways. The pool of mutations being relatively small might actually be a good thing, because it means you don't get bogged down with crap like shotgun shoulders all that often and actually get what you want from the pool. Instead, the budget for variety went right into the firearm selection. This is probably the best way I can convince you to mod the game. All of what I'm about to show you is modded, but keep in mind that the vanilla game also has quite the vast arsenal. Mods just fill in the gaps and go crazy in some places. The weapons on offer include, but are not limited to, the lightning war crime ball, the eyelander, the rocket launcher minigun, a tank, the spear that killed Christ, six miniguns stapled to each other, the candle gun. <laughs> King Dedede's hammer. A literal meteor. The four shot throne device. Dual wielding kick ass hammers. A plane. Or my personal favorite, the thunder crash. Oh, but you already saw plenty of that in the intro, didn't you? Well, we don't need to see it anymore then. Just kidding, I can't help myself. God, I hate that guy. If you couldn't tell, Nuclear Throne is pretty lethal across the board. More than any other game in the genre that I can think of, actually, Nuclear Throne has the most death going on. Whether it being you or the many, many enemies out there, things are going to be dying at a rapid pace. After a loop with Crown of Blood on, sometimes the enemies are taking up every single bit of space that there is left. You die really fast, and safe to say, so do the enemies. Your base health is really, really, really low. You should never really expect it to stay in place either, because in the span of like half a second, it can drop from max to minimum, then back to maximum again. Enemy drops will only ever be health if you've taken damage already, which is why sometimes police trucks drop all ammo, while other times it makes it look like you just blew up an ambulance. A lot of the mutations play with health values as well, and coincidentally tend to be the best mutations available. This ties into one of, if not THE best part of Nuclear Throne, how fucking hard it is. Plenty of other roguelikes are more like a test of RNG, or a test if you can stop yourself from falling asleep. But unlike those titles, Nuclear Throne is pure mechanics. It does not pull punches, and it can be bullshit, especially when this fucker shows up. But I get a very similar rush of adrenaline to playing something like Titanfall 2, God Rest Soul. The rush of having to digest all of what's happening on your screen, 
all of your surroundings, and playing on optimal adrenaline fuel autopilot is like no other. Once the smoke clears and you can walk around, you might realize just how much destruction your weapons cause the environment. One of my favorite things that happens relatively frequently in Nuclear Throne is being in the late game, running low on ammo, and seeing some crazy enormous weapon drop onto the floor. You go, fuck it, and pick it up while having no idea what it is, and you just fire it and see what happens. Like, sometimes the game just drops a weapon called the Turbo Murderizer 3000, and I mean, like, how are you not gonna pick that up? Now that we're here, we can talk about the throne. I absolutely love the way the fight is set up. You come here, you see this giant red carpet, and so naturally you walk on it, you knock on the throne, and then... Now, you can kill the throne like a normal boring person and just sit on it. Or you can blow up these four generators and loop. Post loop, weapons get a lot more crazy, there are new bosses, and new crowns. Now don't let anyone know I told you this, but there also might be a secret finaler boss. Before we depart, there are a few things I want to bring up quickly. First thing that you'll probably notice immediately is that my voice got a lot huskier in the last five seconds, and that's because I contracted COVID over the last two sentences. It's the reason why this video got delayed. <coughs> Nuclear Throne isn't as one-dimensional as I may have made it out to be. There are a whole lot of enemy mutation, mechanics, secret, character, and crown specifics that I didn't get into. Hell, the bit talking about crowns in their vaults got cut entirely because, well, it's not that important. Nuclear Throne is pretty damn simple to understand and an absolutely good time. Go give it a try yourself. After a point where you have your nine mutations, it's really just all up to you to go survive for as long as possible and loop as many times as you can. Mods I use here and in the description. Good luck.